Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining me today. We're gonna to be taking a look at this little bad boy. This is a GL INA AC1300. This is my backup router. And so what I went ahead and did is I flashed it so I could show you all how to set it up from the very beginning. This video is in relation to my previous video, which if you haven't watched yet, it's gonna be linked right up above. Uh, in the previous video, I showed you all how to set up a VPN server on an ASUS router. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be setting this bad boy up as a VPN client router. So that way, no matter where we are in the world, we're still browsing the internet. All our traffic goes first to our home router and then to the internet. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, plug in your GLI net router, your travel router, and go to your browser of choice. Go to 192.168.8.1. That's going to be to log into the admin console of the router. Um, and then from there, you're going to go ahead and be prompted with this screen where you can choose your language. They have several different languages you could choose from. They have English, um, you know, Spanish, Italian, Chinese, I guess. Um, but if you're watching this, probably English is your way to go. Uh, and then you're gonna go ahead and enter a new password. So by default, the default password is good life. It's all lowercase, one word spelled out. Uh, but so you see that little check box option down here, that's gonna be for preventing a weak password. That's just gonna make sure that you're, you know, make uh, putting in the uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, that kind of thing. Uh, just to make sure it's harder to guess for people. Uh, so let's go ahead and type in here. So boom, you hit a minimum of 10 characters. The uh, characters are case sensitive and at least two uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. So we have hit all those marks. So let's go ahead and do that for this next one. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and click apply. And once it's spun up, you're gonna go ahead and see the admin panel here. Now, this is a huge suite of different tools. It can get very confusing very fast. So I'm going to try and break this down for you to make it as easy as possible, right? Uh, the first tab right here on the left, it's going to be internet. So these are the different ways you can you know, bring internet into your router as you're traveling. Uh, you have like ethernet, uh, that could be great. Let's say you're staying at a friend's house or something, you can plug directly into their router. Uh, that's probably the most you know, optimal way to do it because that way you're getting a full stream uninterrupted, you know, data connection. Uh, and then you have repeater. Repeater is great. Uh, let's say you're at a hotel or an Airbnb. Uh, it does not have an ethernet connection that you can connect to, right? There's no, you know, nowadays a lot of hotels, for example, they don't have that ethernet port. So what this will allow you to do is it'll allow you to take that Wi-Fi connection and then repeat it back through your router. And then we have tethering. Tethering is uh, what you're probably familiar with on your phone. So if you use your phone as a mobile hotspot, you can do that type of tether and plug it into the USB port in the back of your travel router. And then there's cellular. This is gonna be more for MiFi devices. Um, you know, T-Mobile has them uh, if you're in the USA, for example, or if you're in Europe, the Orange Network. And I, I think in the Middle East, they use Zane. Uh, so there's different companies out there that offer these uh, cellular different connections. Uh, the next tab here, Let's look at wireless, right? So wireless, this is really cool and it gives you a lot of options. So you can do a 2.4 gigahertz or you can do a five gigahertz. And you can also use guest Wi-Fi access. So let's say you're traveling with buddies, you can just give them that guest Wi-Fi or maybe a stranger at a cafe wants uh, to use your network for whatever reason. <laughs> um, that's when you would put them on the guest Wi-Fi. Uh, then we have clients. So clients is cool because you can see who's on your router at that very moment. Uh, you can see their data, their traffic. You can go ahead and configure them as well. Um, you can block them if you need to. And then we have VPN. This is gonna be the big bad boy that we're looking for, right? So the VPN is broken down. You can do open VPN client, open VPN server, WireGuard client, WireGuard server. Uh, there's different functionalities through here for each of them. Uh, this is the main dashboard, but when you look on the left, if you go to VPN client, there's by default NordVPN. Uh, so if you're using NordVPN service, you can go to NordVPN, just type in Google NordVPN, um, open VPN, you know, and you'll it'll take you to their support page where you can, you know, get all the configuration files needed and they have tutorials and all that. Um, and then you can do add manually. Add manually is when we're gonna go ahead and add our own VPN configuration file. Uh, same thing for WireGuard. 
Uh, you can, you know, by default, they have these. Uh, you can also do add manually, and this is when you would add your own uh, WireGuard client file. Uh, over here in applications, there's different plugins. I'm not gonna really get into that right now, but you can also set up like dynamic DNS and all that stuff. Um, for networking, you, get, you know, you have your typical firewall. You can set up the uh, different LAN configurations. You could change the MAC address, which is going to be very important. Actually, I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and this whole suite of tools here you can use. And then we have system. So in system, this is going to basically be the whole, I guess, uh, you know, monitoring tool. You can go ahead and change your admin password. Uh, one thing I do recommend always, once you get your router going, uh, go ahead and select your time zone so you can choose the time zone that you're going to be in. Uh, you can also sync it to, uh, you know, if it's different from where your browser is, you want to sync it, you could do that. Um, and then you could also do the upgrade. Uh, so you want to make sure you're on the latest firmware. Uh, it's very important because, you know, they have a lot of security updates and even little feature updates that they go ahead and add in. All right, let's go ahead and set up that VPN. So let's go ahead and click on VPN on the left side and we're gonna start with the open VPN client. Uh, we're gonna be using certificate we did in the previous video if you were following that. If not, I'm gonna link to it, you know, somewhere on here uh, where we set up the VPN server. So this is gonna be the configuration file that we got from that one. Um, so go ahead and give it a name. You can usually name that after a location or something or maybe you wanna say like, you know, um, you know, super file, whatever. Uh, and then we're gonna just go ahead and drag that open VPN configuration file into here. And then you're gonna go ahead and fill in the username and password, not of your router, but of one of the profiles you set up for that open VPN server. So like here, I'm gonna go ahead and enter this in. All right, and then just click apply. And now we have that set up. Next, we're going to go to WireGuard and do the same thing for the WireGuard one. I like to usually have OpenVPN and WireGuard both readily available. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and drag that WireGuard configuration file in here. Boom. And just click apply. So WireGuard actually has it everything encoded within it. So you don't really have to enter a username or password for that one. So we're good there. Um, and then when you go to the VPN dashboard, you this is where you could toggle them off and on. Uh, you can have the OpenVPN on or the WireGuard on. Uh, you can only have one of these on at any given moment. Uh, and right now I don't have the internet set up, so I can go ahead and do that real quick. So we're gonna go to wireless over here. Uh, sorry, not wireless, my apologies, internet. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and connect via a repeater. So I'll just click connect. It's gonna search for available networks. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and select one of the networks. I'm gonna go ahead and enter the login for that. Click apply. And now it's connecting. So as you can see, I am connected now. Uh, so we're going to go back to the dashboard and let's go ahead and flip one of these on to go ahead and test it out. So I'm going to go ahead and test the OpenVPN up. Uh, so here you can actually click view log so you can see everything going on as it's going. If you're into the whole technical data or if you're trying to troubleshoot it, maybe it's not working properly. You can copy that, you know, log data run it through chat GPT or something to help you troubleshoot, or if you have a tech guy that can help you, that would help as well. And as you can see, we are now connected and we are using the proper uh, file. Everything's working, so that's great. Next, we're gonna go ahead and try to do the WireGuard one. And again, you can view the log information as needed. And let's go ahead and wait for that startup. And boom, it started up just like that. It's pretty quick, pretty fast and you know, it really doesn't take that long. If it's taking longer than you would think, you know, I would probably review the log files and try to figure out what's going on. Maybe you missed a step. Uh, but yeah, so now we're connected and we're good to go. And you can see the traffic stats and everything's running good. Now, let's say you're at a hotel and your internet connection will help me turn this off real quick. So let's say you connected to a hotel's uh, internet and, and it's not working it's not prompting you for a captive portal. A captive portal is basically what you'll see where, it, you know, let's say you lo you're at a Hilton and then that Hilton's like, hey, what's your room number? What's your last name? That sort of thing. Um, a captive portal, usually that's what that is. Uh, if that's not popping up, there's an alternative method. And what we'll do is we'll go to Mac address. And then here, what you can do to get around that, if it's not popping up, is on, let's say you have a mobile device, maybe a tablet, maybe your laptop or something else. 
Um, you can go here and you can do the captive portal from your device, you know, your laptop, your phone, whatever, just connect to that hotel Wi-Fi, and then you come to the router and you clone it. And so what cloning does is it'll take the MAC address of the device you're using. So let's say you have your phone, you log into the hotel Wi-Fi with your phone, and then you come into your router and you clone your phone's address on it. And that way, when it goes to the hotel, uh, what they see is that this same MAC address is already authorized. And then from there, you just connect your phone back to this router and then you're good to go. And that's pretty much it. I hope you all found this video useful and saw how easy it is to actually go in and set up a travel client router. If you did find it useful, please hit that like button and subscribe. It does help the channel out. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll do my best to go ahead and get to them. Until next time.